Hey, Nathan, it's been a crazy year for cars and trucks. So many things have gone wrong for the re regular consumer. Everything from chip shortages to COVID to slowdowns. I mean, it's been a really tough year. So, you know, it's one of those, like, good news, bad news situations, right? The good news is if you're selling a car, oh. it's, a, <laughs> it's a hell of a time to sell a car oh, yeah. or truck. But if you're buying a car... Yeah, so even used cars, right now it is a seller's paradise. Cars are going for way above what they should be going for in a regular market. So uh, I'm going to give you a number, okay? It's mm -hmm. going to blow your mind. Uh, and then uh, I'll tell you what that number is. Okay. okay. 17,432. Mm, I'm going to say a Nissan Sentra. Nope. <laughs> that is the price increase of the number one most priced increase car from 20 to 2021. Can you believe that? $17,000 price increase. And in this video, dude, we're going to be talking wait, wait, about... Wait, wait, wait. That's the price increase? increase. That's not <laughs> the price of a car? That's the price increase, yeah. Oh, whoa! Yeah, okay, that was not what I was expecting. We're going to be talking about the uh, top 10 most costly increase vehicles, both new and used. Okay. Ooh. From 20 to, from this time last year to this time this year. And that was a study done by IC Cars, so thank you very much. Uh, and the, uh, get this, on the low end, on the low end, the average increase of a new car is 25.1%. In a year, and on the high end, that number is 33.9%. Uh, so, what car do you think that is? I'm not going to tell you. If you can't guess it, we have to wait till we get to number one. Oh, uh, um, okay. Mustang? Ford Mustang? You're close. It's a sports car, but it's not. In three of these vehicles are actually four of them are trucks. Oh, well, yeah. All right, so, let's start with the uh, new cars and then we'll work our way down to the old cars. And as is always the case with TFL, we'll do it from top 10 going. Down, so we'll stop at number ten, and then we'll go down to number one. Cool. Okay, sounds good. All right, the number ten, Nathan, is the Range Rover Sport. Uh, it had an increase of eleven thousand nine hundred sixty-nine dollars, or about twenty-five percent. So almost twelve thousand dollars. And we can do is we can talk about these cars too. Yeah, well, they're paying twelve thousand dollars too much for that truck right now. I mean, for <laughs> for that vehicle. I'm sorry, but the Sport, it, it, it's okay. But, you know, we, we all know that there's some issues with the reliability, but it's also just not worth the price that they're, uh, ugh, $12,000 more is too much. You think? Oh, way too much. Oh, yeah, well, you know. Um, I, I would, you know, $2,000 at a regular markup from dealers, which they tend to do because they have no scruples. Yes, okay, that'd be fine. I, I mean, understandable, I should say. But when it comes to that much money for yeah. that vehicle, yeah. no bueno. Yeah, so there is some... Um, uh, JLR News, of course, and we can mm. talk about that. Number one, uh, Jaguar has basically gone all electric, so they've now Th they're announced. going all yep, electric. Yep, I exactly. mean, they, it's not happening tomorrow. Right. So, so Land Rover and Range Rover are going to stick with obviously the ability to have, at least for now, internal combustion cars. Uh, and as you know, we have a Land Rover Defender, and uh, the latest news is that there's now because of the chip shortage. A one-year wait if you want a Defender. <laughs> one year. One year wait. So, it, you know, one year wait if you want a Defender and if you want a Range Rover Sport, it's going to cost you at least 60000 That's kind of the entry level, right? Uh -huh. uh, and that's an increase of 25% over this time last year. I'll tell you what, Roman. Once we get through the list of the new cars, yeah. uh, let's discuss why there's this increase. So yeah, we can go the a little, Yeah, go into the weeds just a little tiny bit. Yeah, okay. Okay. No, number nine, and this is these are ranked by percentages. So the number... The, the, the dollar number is going to be lower, but the percentage is higher. This this vehicle has increased almost 26% by a factor of 2,313, and it is the Mitsubishi Mirage, which I believe... <laughs> Is, Are you kidding? It's one of the least expensive cars in America. Yeah, it is. To start it, with. Yeah, um, they were one of the few car companies that, up until recently, actually sold a car in the United States for less than ten thousand dollars. Now, granted, it was almost impossible to get one for that price, but really, they they sit around twelve to fourteen thousand dollars for the fairly cheap ones. They can go all the way up to about twenty. And now they're like sixteen. Just, and that's the base price. Yeah, and I gotta say, with those little 13-inch wheels, it's, uh, the, it's it's one of the cars that I would probably stay away from if I were. <laughs> They're not the okay. Well, you know, honestly, it should be. I've been trying to get one of these to but test. Really? Yeah, we would. Well, but, and the reason why is because it gets phenomenal gas mileage over 40 miles per gallon for a non-hybrid vehicle. That's really good, but. If you get the CVT version of the car and you bring it to the Rocky Mountains with the little tiny, you know, three-cylinder engine, it's not going to go very far or very fast. Uh, but they do have a manual transmission version. So I've been asking Mitsubishi, please send us one of these so we can do an MPG run. If I call it a dud, that's not going to help. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> not, no, no. And, and the thing is, is that it's the, the car has been generally plastic-y. Planned. It's very plasticky. It's very cheap. But, 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 you know, Tinny. Roman, to be fair, it's a very inexpensive car for people who can't afford a nicer yeah, car. Yeah, yeah. The other thing I want to see is what, what the uh, safety stats on the uh, it's, it, it's okay. I mean, compared to older cars, it's much better. Um, it's and it does have ABS. On top safety stuff. pick plus, is it? It's, it's not quite there, no. <laughs> but it's also not, you know, it's it, there are no red flags for it being completely unsafe. So keep that in mind so, as well. So if you were to pick, like, you know, the, 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 the duds in the car world, that would certainly be one of them. And there's also a Ford that falls into that category. Well, there was. There is a Ford that falls into that category. You're kidding. It's built, it's built, I'll give you a hint, it's built in India. Oh, oh, I know what that is. Yeah. Yeah, what is it? it's EcoSport. Yeah, exactly. And, and, you know, when we sold our Raptor this week, right? Yeah. I was talking to the owner of the dealership, and I'm like, how do those sell? And he, he kind of looked at me like I just asked, you know. The worst question the ever. The worst question ever. And he said, okay, I'm going to tell you what we did. What we do, we put them into the, uh, like, loaner fleet. So when people go and, you know, basically have their car or truck service at the Ford dealership, they uh-huh. get the EcoSport, and then they discount them. And then they put them on the lot for a couple thousand dollars less, and then they sell. And he said, usually they have like 15 of them lined up. He's, he looked out, you know, and there were like four because, once again, there are no inventory of new cars. Right. Right now, it's, it's really tough to get it. Uh, the thing is, is that I've actually looked at their sales numbers. We did some reports recently, and they sell them. They do sell, but it is because the dealerships are very uh, inventive um, ways of selling them. And, uh, yeah, they're also very popular fleet vehicles. I've seen them in rental fleets left and right. Those that remain. Yeah. <laughs> There's even, not that many even, rental even, fleets out even there. Even those are selling out. And, you know, the thing about these numbers is, you know, the Tundra is number eight. 26% increase, $8,000. That doesn't surprise me too much. But, you know, this is all profit for the dealerships. Oh, God, yeah. And for the vehicle manufacturers. So, I mean, you know, we're being a little rough on some of these cars. But let's face it, manufacturers and dealers are now making money hand over fist because there's no more discounting of trucks. There's mm. no more, you know, if you can get a discounted vehicle now, you're doing really well. But Yeah, and we, we managed to pull that off with a Subaru recently. But that's for the most... Because I ordered it like two that, months ago. Well, that's exactly it. And right now, you know, guys, if, if you really don't want to try to haggle with these people, and good luck with that, you're going to have to wait a little while before prices start to settle down. And this is, as far as I'm concerned, I, feel, I, I consider a lot of dealers who are pushing these prices and ridiculous increases as being somewhat unscrupulous because they're taking advantage of a program right now where everybody is in the same league. They can't get cars because there aren't that many chips or any in some cases, and inventory is shrinking. So they're taking advantage of that, and they're taking advantage of the buyer. I was talking to a Mazda dealer. He said he usually has like 150 Mazdas in the lot, uh-huh. less than 50. Mm. He says if somebody comes in and says, I want to haggle, he's like, Go find yeah. whatever Mazda you want and go someplace else because we're getting full MSRP. Yep, yep. Yeah. And that's the minimum. And you know what? Full MSRP, fair enough. But it's these price increases over MSRP that are really iffy. So should we continue? Yeah, yeah. And let's talk about the next one, number seven. That's the uh, Chevrolet Camaro, 26.7% increase or 6582 I didn't think Camaros were actually selling. Uh, yeah, they are. Um, and... They recently announced that they will be continuing them through next year as well. I think originally there was a uh, rumor that they were going to discontinue them kind of soon, but they they're still they still have some demand, and I think it's a really good car. I don't know if it's worth a major increase, but you know, so be it. <laughs> That's the way it is. Um, it competes with the Mustang. It's they have currently. Five different powertrains, I believe. There's a four-cylinder turbo, a six-cylinder. Um, well, by the way, a really good six-cylinder, I gotta say. And two different V8s, and then there's also the super hot V8, uh, the ZL1 or or whatever they're calling it now. So they have five different trims or several different trims. Convertible version, really, just you know, it goes directly against the Mustang, and really those two compete directly against each other far more so than say something like a Challenger. By the way, I was wrong. These are used cars that we're talking about. Sorry. Uh oh. Yeah. So we're talking used, not new new car prices. Okay. Increase. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I I read this wrong, Nathan. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, top ten worst cars. These are so. In other words, these are the top ten worst cars to buy right now. Should we start over? No, let's keep going. Keep going. Okay, okay. Yeah, we make mistakes. We're not perfect. Okay, it's okay. It's a podcast. All right. The let's title go. will be different when you see the actual. Yeah, because uh, I was looking at the prices of these things, and the price seems like you know very low. So they're not new car prices. Okay. Uh, so continuing on the used car prices yeah, Chevrolet, on these vehicles. Uh, Chevrolet Silverado, uh, number six, fifteen hundred. A 27% increase, $7,960 increase. That's not much of a surprise for pickup trucks. Pickup trucks are the biggest selling vehicles in the United States by far. And Chevrolet, if you combine Chevrolet and GMC totals, they go head to head with Ford's F Series totals. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, not a big surprise there. What's the next one? Uh, number uh, five, this is the one that uh, is actually pretty. Uh, Crazy, because I thought this segment was dead. Uh, it's the Mercedes-Benz S-Class. No kidding. Yeah, because I didn't think anybody was buying big old sedans, right? Uh, that's increased 27.9% uh, or 16198 And that is a used S-Class. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Um, beautiful car. I mean, amazing interior and all that, but I, I have a hard time. German cars are having a hard time maintaining their value. And yeah. so this is a little perplexing. But not this. I, I mean, not everything is going up in value. Yeah, now. everything yeah. is going up in value. So yeah. normally, vehicles that tank very quickly aren't tanking as quickly. Yeah, I, I guess that's a good thing for some people. Well, I think it's you know they're not, not depreciating as quickly. Would well, be, yeah, they're adding this extra price. So even though the value does depreciate, still the extra price on top of that because of the shortage is still there. So you know you're, you're kind of in trouble one way or the other if you're a buyer. So uh, basically, we're talking about you know the price change from last year at this time to this year. Uh, so now we're talking about the next car, which is number four, the GMC Sierra, which is actually a truck. Uh, we're looking at a 28.6% increase or $9,418, $9, dude. So even greater than the Silverado. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. I mean, and then the number GMC. three is a Ram. Wow, really? Yeah, number three is a Ram at 28.8%. That's up $8,000. $8,000 more for a used Ram. Yeah, the next one is just mind-blowing, though. Number mm. two. Can you guess what it is? Ford F-150? No, it's a Mercedes. Come on, you can guess what it is. It's, oh. the, it's the Mercedes that I've always wanted, but uh, could never afford, and now I will never afford. Oh, uh, well, th that would be the GT? No, come on. What, what Mercedes do I want? There's well, only one Mercedes I lust after, and it's not a sports car. It's not a luxury car. Oh, um, well, then it's I don't... off-roader. Oh, you, wait, you want a G wagon? Yes, of course. Oh, of I've always course. wanted a G wagon. Sorry, I, I didn't equate that with yes. Mercedes. Yes. Uh, yes, it's it's its own thing. Remember, remember when I ran over you with that? Uh, I certainly do. How, how in love and how in love in love I was that four by four squared. You remember that? Yeah, so much in love with it that you decided to leave the bumper on the highway at one point. Uh, well, that was <laughs> that, that was a small. I, I, I would like to say the bumper left itself on the highway. <laughs> it detached itself. And <laughs> committed it committed suicide. It was so ugly. It knew that. It, well, let me let me tell that story. Yeah, so, it's a really funny story. It, it, we so uh, my dream car for a long time was the G wagon, and of course, at the end of the first generation, right, which just happened recently, they came out with a four by four squared, and they were like two hundred fifty thousand. Yeah, and they, they had some a really yeah. unique suspension setup. They're really portal axles. Yeah, portal axles and. Real monster. So, so for the that was it two years ago or three years ago now for the Eli Auto Show, three Merce years. Mercedes lent me one, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we decided to go to Hungry Valley, mm -hmm. north of LA, and take it off road. And what they did to make it street legal so that other cars wouldn't like uh, porpoise underneath it yeah. was they added this really kind of tacked on, like double stainless steel bar bumper. Remember what that thing looked like? It looked like it, something that was just stuck together. It looked like a musical instrument. It almost looked like a flute. Um, it's not like two flutes stuck together. Yeah, two flutes two stuck together. It, it was yeah. really thin, you know, metal. We're not talking about something that looks like it's structurally sound, but Mercedes just did the bare minimum to get through the requirement from the Department of Transportation to have a bumper hanging low enough or a component of it to stop a car from going directly underneath it in a rear end accident. Yeah. But it's very flimsy. Yeah, so uh, we took it to Hungry Valley uh, and we decided to actually run Nathan over with it because it's so tall. Yeah. That was fine. Yeah, so they took the largest human being that they have at TFL, laid him on the ground, and said, okay, let's drive over you. And, and then that's a good video if you want to look at that video. Fun. And then yeah. we decided, because it was so unstoppably great with the portal axles, to go over this berm, right? And then when I went over the berm, the bumper actually caught and kind of bent up just a little bit. Just a little tiny bit. 
And I looked at it. It was held on by like four bolts. And I was like, yeah, it's fine. So that night I go to pick up my wife and, you know, L.A. traffic, 405, mm-hmm. right? Uh, and, oh, my God, the bumper in the middle of L.A. traffic just decides to fall off on one side. So now I'm driving down the road like at 9 o'clock at night. Sparks are flying. And the bumper's <laughs> holding on by one bolt. Oh, and uh, caveat, he's trying to impress his wife because he's kind of hoping that at one point in time, hey, honey, maybe we should buy one of these used or whatever. Yeah, and I didn't all of a sudden, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, she's too smart for that. So I, I, I was unable. I was able to actually undo the bumper, stick it in the vehicle because it's so long, right? It's stuck into the passenger compartment. Right. So I go to pick her up. Uh, at, is it Bob Hope? The small airport up in Burbank. It's Bob Hope, right? Yeah, it is Bob Hope. Yeah, airport. Bob Hope. Yeah, Burbank. Pick her up at the airport, and there's a stinky, you know, that's been dragging on the ground bumper in the passenger well compartment. And she's like, "What the hell is this?" And I was like, "Oh, well, it's the uh, bumper to the two hundred fifty thousand dollars Mercedes." Yeah, you should have tried my thing, which would have been. You didn't see any bumper. There's nothing in here. You saw nothing. <laughs> anyway, um, what happened was um, that, um, <laughs> where was I going with this? That she did not like the vehicle. She could not get into it because you had to like you have climbed. a pole vault into it. <laughs> yeah. It's so funny seeing these things driving around L.A. and like, you know, Rodeo Drive right. and these tiny little you know, people them in them. Road. It's just like, come on. And, and, and the, the, you know, the net effect is that the G-Wagon has increased 33.2% or $37,000. So that's on top of the price. Now, this is used. So on top of the used price of this vehicle, you're paying for basically another whole year, vehicle. It would have been 37000 That's crazy. Yeah. All right, well, let, let's move on. The number one, the one you couldn't guess, that increased 17000 or 33.9%. The G-Wagon only won 33.2%. What yeah. do you think it is? Come on, this is a sports car. It's the very it's it's the sports car every YouTuber has to have. Yeah, the Corvette. Yes, that's right. You know why I know that? How do you know that? It's right behind me. Oh, there you go. It, it had to be. <laughs> yeah, it had to be the Corvette. I'm sorry, guys. I mean, it's a dead giveaway. Even I can figure this one out. Um, the thing about the Corvette is that uh, they really knocked it out of the park when they designed this brand new one. At first, I wasn't really into it. Um, they got rid of manual transmission. They put the engine into the back. You know, all this other stuff. But especially in this blue. It's outstanding to look at. Up close, it's even better than when you see the pictures. And Roman's driven way more than I have. And you've got to acknowledge the performance and handling of this car is just incredible for the price. Yeah, I mean, you know, the Europeans are kind of snooty when it comes to their sports cars. But we have built in America a car to rival those guys. By, by a significant margin. Yeah, uh, and we'll never get the credit for it because, you know, it's a Corvette and it's got all this baggage. But it is up there with any... You know, three or four times as expensive European sports car in terms of its looks, in terms of its handling. People always, especially in Europe, kind of poo-poo it for the interior, but I think the interior is just as nice. Much better now. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. So I I see, you know, is it worth $17,000 more? I'm not sure. I mean, you know, GM, they stopped production recently of the Corvette, and it wasn't because of the the chips. chips. Yeah, it wasn't because of chips. Well, that was part of the reason. No, they said specifically it wasn't chips. It wasn't chips. No, they said it was supply issues. Supply side issues, not chips. Huh, okay, well, it was during COVID yeah, when no, they like, did it. No, like last week they announced it. Yeah, so you know you you can equate that with you know the, the COVID slowdown and how everything. Remember, there's hundreds of companies that feed into one major company in terms of part suppliers. So it could be any number of those that slowed down. All right, so are you ready for the second list, which I got wrong originally? But this is the top ten vehicles that have increased the least or actually have decreased. Okay, that's a good here. thing. So this is good for buyers now. Is, well, kind well, of. you'll see. It's kind of good. So right. number 10 is the Subaru Impreza, which has only increased uh, $1,272 or 7.6%. So it's still increased, but it's the least amount of increase. Okay, so you're paying a little over a grand more for a car that... Honestly, it's it's a perfectly good car for all weather and for budget-minded people that get really good mileage. It is the little brother of the one that we just bought in terms of it's, it doesn't have the big lift kit or anything like that. Uh, I almost bought one for my wife with a manual transmission. You know why we didn't do it, aside from the dealership not being great? Uh, because... You didn't want a CVT? No, no, it had a manual. Oh, it had a manual. Oh, yeah, so yeah, 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 you can get the manual. Uh, because you didn't, I don't know, why didn't you do it? A funny thing happened. Uh, we were actually we were test driving it, and it was in the price area we wanted. And my wife went into a driveway mm-hmm. uh, and pulled up, and we uh, bottomed out 
a wow. little tiny bit because the Impreza is actually really low to the it ground. Doesn't have that eight point seven inches. No, because we we weren't looking at the cross track, which was more expensive. So anyway, that was why we didn't get it. But it's it's a perfectly good car. Uh, I do recommend it with the manual transmission. I think Roman would as well. Let's move on to the next car. Uh, before we do that, I just want to do a big shout out to all the patrons uh, that oh, support yes. this podcast. Uh, so if you guys, uh, you know, this this is a much different animal from what we do usually on YouTube. I think it's much more, well, unscripted, as you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> Considering the big mistake we made in the beginning, oops. Oops, yeah. but much, also much more kind of personal in some ways and much more uh, free-flowing uh, in terms of our opinions. You know, we have to be a little bit more... Um, I would say Real planned and, or structured in yeah, the videos. Yeah, this, yeah. this is kind of more free flowing. So if you love that, we'd appreciate your support on uh, our Patreon page. Mm-hmm. It's uh, patreon.com slash TFL car. We'd love to have you, you know, give us any amount of money you can uh, so that we can keep doing these things. We've actually added, um, besides the YouTube channels, we've added the, the podcast now because I think people like listening to them either when they're running mm-hmm. or while they're driving. And there's two different podcast channels. Yeah, too. there's there's this one and then, you know, you've been featured on both and there's a truck channel as well. Yep. Uh, so it's added a huge amount of work uh, to, you know, everybody's load because we're still doing <laughs> all, all the, the videos. videos. <laughs> Seven different video channels, four different websites. Yeah. So, <laughs> so if you guys appreciate this kind of much more uh, candid uh, discussion, uh, and, and you want to keep us, you know, in 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 an office space. And w- what's your favorite food, dude? Uh, well, uh, Japanese. Yeah, sushi. There you go. Yeah, um, but there is more to has this. Expensive taste. For, well, I do because I'm an expensive type of guy. But also <laughs> remember, patrons. On top of that, if you have questions yeah. and you want them read on TFL uh, Talk, either one of them. Yeah, ours. we're still doing that. As, you know, right now the perks that the patrons patron patron. Not, I won't say Patreons, but they're not Patreons, they're patrons, Kat, uh, is that we post, you know, like our most popular and our most kind of most production-worthy videos, like the series we're doing, to right. back, No Payment Needed, uh, there first, so you get a preview of what's coming up ahead of everybody else. Right. And we're going to start, you know, answering questions uh, on this show. If you and have- on truck. Yeah, and yeah. on truck uh, on the podcast. So if you have any questions, we'll start answering them. And by the way, if you do have any questions, uh, we'd love actually to get video questions. Oh, that would be fantastic. Be, yeah, so just like, you know, you could take your phone and just aim it at yourself. And, mm-hmm. just, re- and just, yeah, record, record the question and send it to us. Uh, just send it to us at uh, info at TFL car. Or if you want to do a truck, ask at TFL truck.com. Either one of those works. Please keep language clean and let's stay away from anything that might be considered a topic that would be taboo. And if, if you're having a hard time transferring, because it's a big file, we do have a, a WeTransfer uh, mm-hmm. where you can just use WeTransfer to send it uh, and email us for that, and we'll send you the link to that, and you can send it to us. So we'd love to answer those questions. All right, let's keep going, dude. Yeah. Number nine, Honda HRV, uh, 6.9% increased. We've gone down from 76 or 1200 bucks about it. Okay, now uh, the HRV is really close to getting a complete update and possibly becoming an all new vehicle. The rumor is is that the next generation will be a hybrid, which makes sense. Honda is moving towards hybrid hybridization. Yeah. Okay, with their new vehicles. So the current model, now if you get a really older one like the first generation because there's technically two generations HRVs, you can get a manual transmission with front wheel drive. Second generation, which is the current model, uh, you can't but it comes with a continuously variable transmission and it comes with Honda quality, which I think is quite good. But the most important part of all the HRVs is the interior setup. So, so you just drove the Taos, which is a new mm-hmm. Volkswagen. Which would you get? The HRV? Oh, the Taos. Really? Yeah. The Taos will, will dr- right, drive circles around it. It has a really sharp little turbocharged engine, 1.5, uh, great power. Uh, I'm not in love with the transmission, which is a DSG in the Taos, but there's a whole video out there with me driving it and talking about it. Oh, we just it published it yesterday. Yeah, just put it up. Yeah, so check uh, it out. But I really think it's the best Volkswagen product I've driven. Mm-hmm. I, I, I would buy it over an Atlas if I had the same money. I would buy it over the new Tiguan. It looks, it's that good. It looks like a baby Tiguan. It is. It's a baby Tiguan, but it's it's got great space, and, it, and the, the suspension setup is beautiful for a little vehicle like that. But the HRV does have a big caveat, a uh, big trump card, I should say, and that is its interior design. It is one of the most flexible interior setups ever, and you can put amazing amounts of things in this really tiny little crossover. So that's the HRV's appeal in my book, and it's a fairly well put together vehicle. So there it is. Uh, is it worth, was it 1200 bucks more? Yeah, yeah maybe. 
Well, you know, I mean, people did get those stimulus checks, so now we're in stimulus check money. <laughs> yeah, so you, you blow your stimulus check in order to pay for the premium on the vehicle that you should have or, to pay Nathan, for. Or, you know, if you really want to go wild, get, get scratch tickets, and maybe you could... <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Actually, Buy, yeah. afford that G-Wagon if you hit it right. Get $1,000 worth of scratch tickets. You heard it here first, folks. I was thinking about that. It's like the government gives you money, and if you go get those scratch tickets, you just give it right back to them. <laughs> Yeah, in, in an essence, yeah. So it's a full, you know, it's a full circle. Full circle, exactly. The the, the circle of of taxable life in America. All okay, right, number we're eight. not going to go into that anymore. No, no, we don't do politics. Number eight is the CX three. Uh, it's up six point three percent, or just about a thousand bucks. That's crazy. Uh, yeah, CX three. Well, is that's also- a problem for me. You know why? CX three is a perfectly good car, yeah. but it's being discontinued. Yeah, I know. They're actually getting rid of them, and they're and the Mazda six too. Yeah, yeah, the in Mazda America. six. In America, but the Mazda six is going to get an interesting replacement we hear the, the cx3 is uh going away completely and it's being replaced sort of by the cx30 which will take its place as the smallest crossover in mazda's lineup and it's a great crossover the thing about the cx3 is that it's based on the mazda 2 platform it's tiny uh it's it's no bigger inside than my wife's mini countryman which is one of the smallest vehicles in its class for a crossover uh, it's also not very fast, although it handles very good. It is sexy. Yeah, and I think that the CX-3 is a very good-looking little car, but it's small. So keep that in mind if you're going to go and you spend the premium. You know what Mazda needs? They need to come back with the Mazda Speed. I don't, you oh, know, yeah, yeah, without a doubt. I, I, there's just really, right now, the problem with Mazda is, you know, at least with Subaru, you still have the WRX and the STI, right? With Mazda, you've got no excitement in the showroom. Well, you do have the, the MX-5. You do have the Miata. And the Miata is an exciting, fun little car. Oh, yeah, it is, but it's also... It's all the only one they have. Yeah, and then they've been around a long time. Well, yeah, they, they invented the segment. And and, and, the, and the small, you know, better British convertible is not exactly, you know, going to rile the blood of most millennials. <laughs> well, it, it, they sell, I mean, for a small two-passenger Japanese I mean, convertible, most, they sell If you well. want that car, you'll get the used one. Right, because yeah. there's a boatload of used ones out there. Yeah, and uh, it's not on our list, but it's... it's when a, I say used ones, I mean like first or ch- second gen. Yeah, I love the first gen. I don't fit very well in the first yeah. gen. The second and third gens I fit better in. Uh, but the thing about the, the, the Mazda company as a whole is that they went upper class. You've seen All right, yeah, they're trying. So, like, you had, you know, like Chevys, and then you had Mercedes, and then kind of in the middle uh, were Volvos. And now Volvo's trying to go into that kind of premium segment, and yeah, now Mazda's Mercedes. trying to fill that kind of Volvo middle ground. Their interior and exterior designs are extraordinary. Unfortunately, they still are viewed and will be viewed as entry level cars. And so, some of their really nice offerings are fading away. The Mazda 6, which I think is the best car in its class, at least for styling. And a really good driving performance, unfortunately, is going away. People aren't buying sedans, and people aren't buying big sedans. And speaking of all those, Nathan, that's number seven on our list. It's an uh, increase of 2064 or 5.5%. The XC90, the big crossover. The big crossover. That's their best-selling crossover. Well, no, it's not. Actually, they're, they're, uh, the, the, the second one. the mid The 60s. The XC60 yeah. is one of their best-selling ones. Yeah. But the 90 sells well for them. The 90's old. Yeah. Well, it is an old platform. They do have a plug-in hybrid version of it. Um, Super turbo. Yeah, and it's got the Super Turbo, which is basically a... Supercharged, turbocharged, right. Tweeter. So a four-cylinder engine that has a supercharger and a turbocharger, and what that does is it mitigates lag and still gives you the top-end power uh, all in one package. And it's proven to be pretty effective. Yeah, I think Volvo has a lot of uh, new cars right now, like the, uh, the char- reach, is it the Recharge, the all-electric cars? Mm-hmm. Yep. I, just, I just talked to a guy. He just bought one. Oh, yeah? I was at the car wash, and I said, why'd you buy the Volvo? Uh, and he said he loved the look of it, and mm-hmm. he liked uh, the fact that uh, it had over 200 miles of range. I said, why didn't you get you know something like a Tesla? Yeah, I knew you were going to say Tesla. I was curious, you know, because, yeah. I, I mean, let's face it, t- for every one Volvo they sell, they sell 100 Teslas. Yeah. Uh, electric Volvo, that is. Uh, so I was curious why he didn't go the Tesla route. And he had a lot of good reasons. And it's a good-looking car. Well, you know what they did in my book? They kind of took the same playbook from Apple Design. They did. They it, did. it looks very a clean. lot like, the yeah, very clean. Very simple. Very, very simple. Minimalist. Very elegant in terms of what they did. The curves are great. The, the, ha- the, the way it feels in your hands, so to speak, is very similar. And I've noticed that with other Volvo products in the recent past is that they've been updating them and making them seem like they're Apple products. Number six, Nathan, the Toyota Prius. It's up $971 or 5.4%. I think the thing about the Prius mm. and the reason it's not, you know, look, Prius pioneered hybridization. Yeah, in terms of popular hybridization. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so they, you know, but now uh, I think the world has shifted and everybody's going more toward full electrics. And so I think the Prius, 
Uh, it doesn't mean it's not popular. It doesn't mean it, it doesn't, still sells. Doesn't, doesn't get incredible fuel economy. Yeah. But you know, it, it was kind of that half step mm-hmm. toward what eventually will be full electric, and maybe maybe uh, you know the Prius's time has come and gone. Well, I don't. I don't agree. Um, I could be wrong. No, Toyota. Uh, first of all, has been very resistant to go all electric. They are insistent that they can make a hybrid vehicle that is extraordinarily efficient, uses very little gas, creates very little greenhouse, and at the same time gives you electric range. And they managed to do that quite a bit with some of their products. In fact, recently I drove their uh, Sienna minivan, and normally it's like, I don't care, you know, it's a minivan, so I'm going to talk about its interior. Dude, I was getting like mid to high 30s with that van, driving it like an ape. Yeah, I know, it's crazy. And it's crazy, and it had all-wheel drive. So they, pi- they, pi- they pioneered that hybrid system. Yeah. Uh, and the other thing about the Prius to me, I think, is you know it's always kind of been designed to its own drummer. <laughs> you know, yeah, I, I'm, not a, I'm not a fan of Prius design. Yeah, the, the, the recent design is way out there. Well, they wanted to get attention. They certainly did. They but did, yeah. it, it, it's, it's quite out much. there. Maybe it's a little too like a Tokyo nightlife, I guess, would be the design language. Well, you, you know, no, it, it, it's not because the Koreans have managed to absolutely out-design Toyota when it comes to well, well, hybrids and now electric vehicles. Well, it feels like it feels like like the Prius and some of the some of the electric cars out there look like they're trying really too hard to be futuristic. Mm. You know what I mean? In you, some you, cases, you, you don't have to. The, the design doesn't have to be futuristic. The design just has to be fresh and modern and clean, right? That 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 says future to me. You don't have to have like the weird tail lights and the swooping lines that intersect in really right, interesting right. or you know unusual ways. That that doesn't you know that's not the George Jetson car. I mean to me, clean design that's minimalist is more futuristic than anything. You just were out. What was it Hyundai or Kia? Where yeah, we, with the uh, new Ionic Five, which I thought Kia, was really cool. Yes, exactly. And now you tell me about that design because that was an awesome futuristic yeah, design yeah. that you can buy tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right. And, yeah. Number five on our list is the Audi Q7, um, 3.1% increase, $1,220. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a big old Audi crossover. Yeah, uh, it's one of their better sellers. Once again, uh, crossover Q5 sell well for the German. Best yep. Once again, the midsize. Yeah, yeah, but although the, the Audi builds good vehicles, uh, they are not, uh, how do I put it? They used to have passion kind of imbued, and they lost a lot of that passion. Well, I, th- I think one of the problems, I shouldn't say problem, one of the one of the issues that, that all the Germans have to overcome is that their cars are starting to look all alike. So a Q7, a Q5, a Q3, they all, yeah, they all look, they look a the lot alike. They look the same. Yeah, it's, just, it's a little too much, you know. Give me, mm. some, give me some, some distinguishing something between them. But a spicy-looking version right. of something yeah. that really, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's all too, like, you know, corporate identity. Yeah, and that's I, that's just a thing in, in German design right now. It's yeah, it's really it's really bad right now, and it goes throughout all the German you know makers. Although Mercedes is starting to really you know make some really different looking cars that Speaking don't look Mercedes. Like, yeah, Number I'll four. give Mercedes credit on that. Number four on the list, the GLC. Once again, the midsize crossover. Mid-size yeah, which is yeah. a really good crossover. Uh, it's up only two percent, uh, seven hundred and nine dollars. Uh, yeah, it's a good crossover. Tommy recently did some videos on the GLCs. Yeah, they're. Um, they're interesting, you know. I mean, it's got that definitely that kind of more jelly bean design, mm-hmm. right? So it's much more rounded. If anything, Audi's much more squared off. This is much more rounded. Uh, the GLC is, uh, you know, pushing in some ways uh, the midsize crossover boundary mm-hmm. uh, by, you know, infusing the midsize crossover with a lot of luxury and a lot of kind of, you know, that, those that, those interesting vents, right? That yeah, you yeah. have that. That go across the whole. It's a beautiful interior in and that the, vehicle. You know, now the giant screen. Um, so yeah, it's a cool car. Yeah, I, I, I mean that that is a bit of an increase, but it's not too bad uh, so far. You know, knock on wood, they could be a lot worse. <laughs> <laughs> All right, number three is a car we just bought, the one you didn't buy because it was a little too expensive, the Subaru Crosstrek. It's only up 1.4% or $314. Okay, so... Um, I think they just build a lot of the... Cro- I mean, they're, they sell like crazy. The Crosstrek, they're everywhere. The, the Crosstrek is one of Subaru's best ideas because what they did was... Impreza, and they They took the Impreza, which wasn't selling great, and they added just a couple things. They added a cool little applique with the uh, front bumper, the rear bumper, gave it a cool roof rack, gave it a lift changed the wheels around, and they went from, you know, kind of this wimpy, kind of, you know, looking car to a, hey, 
You know, let's have some fun. It's a great looking car. I think it's the best looking vehicle in Subaru's fleet. I think it's way better looking. I think it's the right size. It's the right size. It's better looking. It, it needs a better looking interior. Interior uh, dated. Aesthetically, it's a little dated. But I think outside and the colors they chose are fantastic because they're really bright and happy. Um, that car is absolutely the best thing that Subaru builds. But... For those of you who are serious about taking one off-road, Roman's recently done some videos, and we've done some stuff in the past. I recommend, and they still sell them, getting the automatic transmission one. A friend of mine bought the six-speed, and he absolutely adores it, and that thing is a mountain goat. So, a um, couple things. Um, I love the car. Uh, I think it's super, you know, we bought the base one, so mm-hmm. like r- rubber steering wheel, you know. Uh, they all come with now the less powerful engine. Yeah, the two liter, uh, 150 horsepower. They all come with eyesight now, so they all have basically lane uh, keep and self steering. Yeah. Uh, and I was testing it in the mountains, and I was doing 75, and it it, it kind of terrified me because it'll like the Tesla will maintain 75 miles an hour, and it will steer around a corner at that speed. The Subaru will start into the corner, and then you flashes. Uh, Self steering disengaged, and you're driving it. Which yeah. the first time that happens is a little terrifying because you're you get your hands on the wheel and you're kind of paying attention as you should be, but you're still expecting the car to be able to steer around the corner. It, it won't. Yeah, we're talking about a highway corner too. Right. So, yeah. so and, and it's good. very you know you go up like when you go Florida and you come down, right. and then you go down and you're coming through those little bendy parts before Idaho Springs. So about seventy miles per hour, well, you're those cruising. Are, that was sixty five. Still, you're cruising through those things yeah. at a fair clip, so they're not tight bends. Is the point? Uh, anyway, it won't do it. Yeah. It'll just disengage. And the first time. It happened it was a little terrifying uh, but by the third time i was expecting it and by mm. the fifth time i'm like if it's going to disengage i'll just turn it off see i never use those systems so yeah. i don't even care but anyway i, it, it, I think like if you're going to denver and you're on a regular highway mm-hmm. where it's stop and go it'll work it's, yeah. it's just when you're going quickly around you know relatively sharp bends and the car's really efficient yeah yeah and i love the fact that ours has a key and it has you know nothing you don't need and everything you do need so right. like you know automatic climate control but only not passenger and driver only one uh and you know, radio has a tune knob and a volume knob. But it still has Bluetooth and all that too. And the, you know, you don't have to hunt around for the outside temperature. It's right there, it's right. displayed. Uh, and the back seat has plenty of room, even if I'm, you know, I'm, I'm this weird garage. Driver and passenger seat are pretty comfortable. And for behind big the, people. you know, ba- back seat, there's plenty of room for yeah. Blazy, who was, who's over here sleeping. Yeah. Hey, uh, um, and it's just, I, it's just, I love the car, you know. And, and I was worried about the CVT, especially with the two liter, because you know now we're at like seven thousand, eight thousand, nine thousand feet. Right. And you know where uh, you go past uh, Georgetown, it gets really steep. Oh yeah. So it was me and Blazy in the car. You know, we're both pretty heavy people and dogs, uh, and. Uh, it did not struggle going up that hill. I think actually, that if you had a pa- if you filled it with four passengers and had some cargo, I think it would struggle a little bit, but it would be okay. It's it's if, if fakes kind of if kind of fakes shifting. So you know when you floor it, it just goes. You know. Yeah, it has like a stepped gear thing. Yeah, stepped gear. So that kind of fakes you into thinking you have a. And and yeah, I know the look. Especially what I'm going to say next. I know the manual is better, but nobody buys a manual. I tried to get a manual because I thought... Yeah, it's 4%. Yeah, it's like you can't even get one. Yeah. So yeah. what's the point of getting a manual and reviewing it for a year when nobody owns Which it? Which is completely the reason. We bought the car that most people will be buying. Exactly. And we never get from the... Well, <laughs> we don't get anything from Subaru, but from the manufacturer in general, we rarely get a, an entry-level model. They want the nicest thing for us to present to you. So in this case, we're being realistic with what the vehicle is. You know, basically... Other than the manual transmission option, there are we got no options, right? We got uh, rubber mats, that rubber was, floor mats. Okay, so, so it's twenty three five, and we end up paying twenty five for it, which is pretty good uh, considering. So, uh, as Roman said, there is a thousand dollar. How much is it uh, upgrade uptake? Uh, well, right now they're up three hundred fourteen dollars. So three hundred fourteen. That's not too bad. So we actually got one below sticker, and that was because I ordered it two months ago before it all hit the fan. Right. And, and also thank you to Peter West over at AAA. They have a car buying service. Uh, they do it here and in Texas and in Oregon, and they're great. They're yeah, and great. there are a lot of other car buying services out there. We're just spotlighting this one because this is the one that helped us. We, we buy. I bought a b- bunch of cars through Peter. What they'll do is they'll. He actually got me the car under sticker, which is incredible. Delivered it to my office, clean, and signed the paperwork here. We need to send him a holiday ham or whatever. Yeah, you did, do didn't have to go to the dealership. Yeah. So thank you, Peter. Thank you, AAA. I would highly recommend it. We're not getting paid for this. Nope. 
Uh, nothing. It's it's just a really great service. Uh, Peter's actually retiring. Robert's taking his place. So if you call, okay. him, call well, Robert. Have a good retirement, Peter. So the thing is, once just just finishing off on the um, the cross track is that uh, I still think it's the best vehicle they build, and I agree. Um, it's not. It's still on an off roader, guys. It's so, so it's can I talk not. About that so I did a video yesterday. You know, mm -hmm. and uh, you know at the conclusion of the video is now I know why Subaru won't give us vehicles because we proved that they're not what Subaru contends they are. So, you know, we were watching, of course, they didn't invite us to the to the recent uh, wilderness. Well, was outback, right? Yeah. Right? Uh, and then they were going up some quarry uh, and, you know, all the journalists were like, wow, this thing's great. It's got, you know, 10 inches of ground clearance and it'll do everything. So, you know, we took it up our standard uh, new hill, which is called Tombstone, mm -hmm. two sides, truth or dare. Uh, usually what we do is we lock everything up right away because you don't want to get it stuck. But I was curious to see how good X mode was, right? Yeah. So I started going up. Um, Using X mode? Yeah. No, I wasn't. Oh, okay. At first you weren't. Up, and, and keep in mind, the most important thing you can have are good tires. Mm -hmm. And it comes with all seasons. Geolanders. Yeah. They're fine, but they're not. I think they're perfectly fine for everyday use. Yeah, they're great for dirt roads, but they're not dedicated off-road tires. Right. right. So grip isn't grand. So I'm going up the easy side, which is truth. I get about halfway up, you know, where that goes to the beat. The, the, yeah, the get fork. Stuck. So when you say get stuck, did it lose traction or did the engine, like, did it recharge power? So, so what power? happens is uh, I floored it. I kept it floored. The car goes up to 2,000 RPM and it just it just won't go. It's just like, like mm. it, you know, I was asking our videographer, were the wheels spinning? He said initially they were spinning and then they stopped spinning. Okay. That's so, exactly what happened to us before. Yeah, that's what, what happened to us before. So I'm like, okay, I'll put it in next mode. Put in X mode, you know, floor it, uh, and it goes another five feet and gets stuck again. So I did get out with X mode. So what X mode does is it's just an algorithm that, you know, basically breaks the wheel that has uh, no traction and sends part of the wheel that has traction, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and so I, I, I got it up like five more feet and then it got stuck again. Uh, and, you know, look, if you have a side by side and it has a CVT, what will happen is if you really floor it, eventually that uh, belt, right, which is a rubber belt, will glaze and then it'll get hot and it'll break. Yeah. But in a side-by-side, -side, it's on the outside, you just stick a new belt on it and you're on your way. Right. Not a big deal. And in a car, the CVT isn't a belt, it's a chain mm. that rides up and down. It, or and it's a metal, it's not like a chain, right, like it's a bicycle a, chain. Yeah, it's like a, yeah. And, and, and if you break that, you're basically looking at like a $2,000 service because right. it's buried in the engine. Well, and so that's why they cut power because they don't exactly. want to roast it because it's a very roast? simple setup. And if you if you grind it and force it to do something that it can't do, you're going to heat it up, you're going to break it, and then you destroy your transmission. So Subaru, what they do, other automakers do this as well is with their CVTs when they're being strained and they can't do something, they cut power to the transmission, preventing it from eating itself so it's both a good and bad thing so i used your method you know backed up a little bit got a run at it got speed a, and then uh actually i tried hill descent control which it has that worked really well so yeah the braking worked really well and then i'm like okay i'll go up there i gotta do it right you can't mm. like that so i go up there and i go to that part where it gets really the car gets really articulated and that's in the wilderness video by the way that a lot of people did there's never any articulation right it's like you're on you're on a pretty steep but there's no like the wheels are not like they're not trying to force one of the wheels off the ground right, to really yeah. show what the other th wheels will do yeah i noticed that too you notice that right yeah, they're yeah. all four flat so now the now the car has two wheels in the air so you're really stressing it out uh, and it would not go up over that first part. It just wouldn't do it. I'm like, okay, I'm going to use the Nathan method. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I backed it up. Momentum. Backed it up, went up, didn't do it. I'm like, oh, I'll try it again. On the fourth try, I did it. <laughs> but yeah. the problem with momentum, Nathan, your method, is that things break. Uh, yeah, sometimes. Yeah, and so that's what happened with me. Yeah, uh, it, that's... Oh, it comes lazy. Yeah, uh, basically, I scratched the bottom of the chin spoiler. Yeah. One of the problems that uh, you encounter with using momentum is that, yeah, indeed, you can break things and... Well, you lose control. And, and the control isn't as good. So, let's go into what we've gone through before with that cross track. Tommy actually, and it's a pretty good video, put one of those, uh, last year's model, I believe, on his roller test. And Tommy's roller test is the best way to test yeah, all-wheel drive it's systems. Scientific. It's scientific. It's very scientific, it and it's, it's all dry. Animals. All the... Uh, all the emotion is taken out of it and it's just a scientific method and our method works really well and the Subaru did not do particularly well on that one as well it did the same thing it cut power uh, other vehicles in the same class don't uh, lesser vehicles as far as I'm concerned were much more efficient at deploying power so that is something that you really should keep in mind if you're serious about doing some actual yeah, off-roading like if you want to go and do like Moab stuff 
you know, this is not. If you want to go overland, you want to go on dirt roads. Yeah, it's it's, perfectly fine. It's fine. I, you know, like I say, I was really rooting for the car. I wanted to do well, and our plan is to next one we're going to do. We're going to try uh, the one where we got in trouble, cliffhanger uh -huh. 1.0. I want to compare it to our Pathfinder. Oh see yeah! If, if like a modern car can can do what a 26 year old truck can do, yeah. I'm curious. Uh, and then I want to do a little bit of a puck lift because you can't lift independent suspension, obviously. Not a, like you know, you can you can raise it a little bit. Yeah, yeah. You just spacers. Yeah, yeah. Basically a puck lift, and then put a little you know more aggressive tire on it. I think it'd be a really good idea. Uh, and then do the test again. That's that's the whole plan right there in a nutshell. And I'm rooting for it. I want it to do well. I love the car, but you know. What am I gonna? You know, what, what do you want me to do? It all comes fake, down fake to the marketing. That it doesn't right. Doesn't it comes down to marketing, and the problem, and this is one of the reasons why we're we're ostracized from certain organizations. The fact that they say that this is an off-road vehicle, they hint at it, they show it doing stuff that, frankly, it really can't do very comfortably. I know a lot of Subaru fans out there will disagree. However, wait for the hate mail. Yeah, uh, which which we get, and I'm totally fine and, with and that. You know what? I, I think we've put this out there before. I'll put it out there again. If you want to prove us wrong. Bring your Subaru. Yep. With a CVT. Yep. I'm not. Look, I'm, I, I, manual is completed. We know the manual Manual's is a different good. setup. Yeah. Bring the bring your whatever you want your Subaru with a CVT and come and show that it can go up cliffhanger. Show us what we're doing wrong. Yeah. Show us what we're doing wrong. Yeah, show us us what doing wrong. Yeah, but we, but it's your car wrong. and you drive it up and and also you can't be modified. Well, the whole point. I don't care if you want to lift it. That's fine. But yeah, but you know, you never know. You know, some guy put a locker in it. God only yeah, if knows. If you get a locker, yeah. Yeah, come on. <laughs> but no, no. Honestly, if you if you want to do that, no go rockets. ahead and do it. <laughs> You know, prove us wrong. We'll take you over there. We'll film you. And uh, like after there. signing some releases so you don't sue us for looking embarrassed, uh, was, you don't make it up that hill very easily. And also, more importantly, if you destroy the car trying to get up the hill, it won't be on us. The thing that come, that it all comes down to is, simply put, it's a very good all-weather all car. It's a good all-wheel drive car. They are considered fairly reliable, and they are considered extremely safe. Their safety numbers are some of the best yeah. in the market. But consider the fact that if you're serious but, about off-roading, there it's, are other it, choices. It's not a Wrangler. No, it's it's not, and it's it never not. will be. It just isn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah it isn't. Or it no. isn't the Trailhawk. No, it's no. It, it would it cannot compete with even the. Um, well, it doesn't have a low range. Well, right? well we just tested the Ford uh, Baby Bronco, the uh, Bronco yeah, Sport, yeah, which is which is better. And the Bronco Sport will absolutely eat it alive off road. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's keep going. We we, we have to wrap this up. Yes. We're running out of time. Number two is a car that Andre just purchased from TFL. It's the BMW i3. I think that's a bargain. I love that car. Well, what's the increase on it? Uh, it's it's the first car that actually decreased 0. 0.4. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, no, sorry, it increased 0. 0.4. No, oh, okay. Ninety-one dollars it increased, but that. That car is that car is the if 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 I needed a, a city car I would get that car all day long. They're super cheap. We bought ours for fourteen with the Rex, right? The little right. Now it did have some issues, but we took care of those. Yeah, it was under uh, it was CPO'd. Yeah, uh, but it's I love that car. I think BMW nailed it out of the ballpark. I think it doesn't get enough love because of the weird thin little tires. People just just didn't. They don't like the shape of it, which right. is a shame. You know that is a, a bespoke BMW. It doesn't share any of its I panels know. with anything else, and it has like a whole special cage that they built for the car itself. It's, it's extremely it's, yeah, safe. It's like carbon fiber. Yeah, yeah, it's really cool. And they use a lot of special materials. Like, I love driving them. And they're like 50k new and used. You can get them for 14k, uh, and they're great little cars. And apparently, only a little above 14k according to this number, which is good. I, Roman and I both agree, and, and Andre obviously, it's a bargain. And if you want a really good electric vehicle that has a range extender, very smart buy. Yeah, yeah, and, and then you can jailbreak the range extender to get more fuel tank use and to get more range. Uh, it's great. I'd love, I'd love to get. I'm waiting for the. They just killed it, so I'm waiting for like the one with the bigger battery, right? The one yeah. that only had like 60 miles of range on the battery, but the new ones I think go up to like 150. That's the one I was looking like they at. Double the battery, yeah. but those are in like 50k right now. Yeah. So yeah. we'll wait for it to you know depreciate, and then we'll get one. And that's the thing is that they do depreciate rather quickly. And the number one car. This is the only car on the list that actually decreased. Uh huh. Everything else increased. This went down two percent, or a thousand dollars, thousand seventy-seven dollars. Uh, the Tesla Model S. <laughs> That's no surprise. It's been around forever. I think you're right. Yeah. I, oh, what is it now? I think, well, 11 years for Tesla, right, as a mm -hmm. company. So at least 11 years. Well, no, I think it's closer to nine years well, when it was actually The Roadster made. was the first one. Yeah, the Roadster, which, yeah. It, which didn't last very long. But the S is their first real model in terms of proper competitive, and, I, and, I think, and it also put them on the on the map. Yeah, I think also the fact that, you know, it's very expensive, so it, it will depreciate. And they're quickly. huge. Yeah. 
It's a big car. It's a big car. Yeah, not and you know a lot. I know a, a, a relative of mine. Uh, he's a cook, uh, saucier actually in San Francisco, and he bought one and he loved it at first, but they couldn't park it. There was like no place to park it, so he got the three. It's also indicative of the fact that you know you're buying yesterday's tech. Yeah, it's an old tech vehicle. Granted, they're still the fastest ones out there. They have ridiculously powerful versions, but. Right now, Porsche builds the new Taycan, Taycan, whatever. Taycan, yeah. And that's a better looking, more uh, sport oriented vehicle in my book. I just think with electric cars, as you know, because you've got a Leaf, right? Yeah. You're, you're, you're not paying a lot for old electric cars, but you're not getting the latest, greatest. No, no. The tech that it's in my daughter's car is, yeah. is, is, is so old by comparison. <laughs> it's crazy. And It's like it, an old iPhone, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, like an, old, my, it's like an old iPhone. My stepfather just got the old SE, right? Uh-huh. It was, I want to say it was like 400 bucks, right? The, mm-hmm. And he loves it because it still has to push you know, the button. As opposed to if stupid. You can physically push but, the button. But yeah, I love that too. I miss that so much. I don't know why Apple went away from it. I, I tried to buy one of those flip phones for my sibling when he turned, when he's, yeah, <laughs> yeah he's in his like... mid-50s. Um, the, but it's, it's still a very good car. I mean, build quality on those cars has improved over time, probably because they've been building them forever. But yeah, now you can get them at a relatively good prices despite the increase. However... Recently, Tesla did inc- uh, increase their prices. Yeah, they've been increasing them kind of in a sneaky way. They're, big, they're like, not the X or the uh, S. Yeah. I, I think they actually stopped production on those for now. That's the latest. But they have increased the th- Model 3 and the Y. Uh-huh. And it's been like $300 here, you know, $400 there. And I think over the last two months, they've increased them by like 2000 So yeah. it's, it's kind of sneaky. They just haven't gone like 2000 gone like Yeah, and they don't announce anything because they really don't have any press or anything. They just went, go and do it. And, yeah. you know, it's... The company Roman idolizes their cars for good reason. They're Whoa, fast. No, 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 no you, I don't, I, I you don't love that. that. Why? I don't idolize them. I, I you know, I love I'm, it. I'm, I'm, no, I don't idolize it. But I respect the fact that they have completely broken the mold and have created a new paradigm for car buying. So I was listening to this podcast, Seen Through Glass, uh-huh. and they were they were arguing about you know if electric cars are the future, and uh, and, and and I had this idea that. Um, in the UK, if you're into like traditional ice, right? I hate that word too. Internal, internal combustion. Internal combustion it's, yeah. it's kind of a way to kind of you know mock traditional cars. To a certain, I don't, I don't like I don't it, either. Like it either. But the, you know, and you know what they're called in the UK, right? They're called petrol heads. Yeah. Right. So what what they're identifying when you think about it is not the car itself, but with what powers the car. Mm-hmm. And to me, Nathan, I don't give a rat's ass what powers it. I'm all about the car or the truck. Mm-hmm. So, so to me, whether there's a battery or a fuel cell or a big old V8, it's not about that necessarily. It's about the performance and what the car makes me feel like. So I'm not like hung up. I'm not a petrol head. I don't care you know, if it's diesel or if it's gas or if it's electric or if it's fuel cell. What I care about is the car itself, and that has not changed. Uh, and to me, an electric car is like a car that is something completely different, something that's completely new. I'm not going to say better or worse than an internal combustion, but it's different and it's cool. It's like, in some ways, I got to tell you, I was listening to another podcast, uh, the truck show, you know, uh, the Sean does, mm-hmm. and they had Gail Banks on there. Yeah. And, and he started talking about like, uh, you know, he, he does turbocharging, right? He does like, like you know, high powered diesel. Oh yeah, yeah, he, yeah. he super boosts diesels and whatnot. Right, yeah, yeah, and, and he started talking about you know like cubic things of air and you know how that determines the and, and I'm like I've heard that oh, I'm you know I'm not the youngest guy anymore but I've heard that so many times right that conversation about like you know you know the difference between supercharger it's, it's it's so like there's nothing new there's nothing different about it it's the same conversation guys were having you know when I was born. Really, mm. literally, it is. No, it, it, ways of creating power, you know, more and, and boost and power into an engine or even I'm, a diesel. I'm bored of it. I'm just, I'm yeah. like, let's move on. Let's let's do something different. And that's why I find electric cars so interesting because instead of you know slapping on a supercharger, you get a computer, plug it in, and you can you can you know you can tune it that way. Or fuel cell cars, whatever that will mean, right? Mm. Um, however, you increase. The horsepower and the output of those. That, that's all it is with me. It's not a love of the company. It's not a love of the, it's just, it's different. It's new. It's fun. It's fresh. It's cool. And that's where I'm at. I'm willing to bet Bitcom that uh, we're, there are going to be and some hate, interesting changes at I Tesla. Bit, I hate Bitcom. I can't stand it. So, um, <laughs> but but the other, the other part of this whole thing, of course, is that the vehicles we talked about, some of them are really good high-tech bargains, potentially that have gone, still gone up in price. So to wrap this whole thing up, I think that uh, you guys out there who are searching for used cars, beware. A lot of people are going to upcharge you on them. 
Uh, no, maybe the market is what the market is. The market is, mar is what it is. And, um, you know, at the very least, if you're trying to get rid of a car, now might be a really good time to do it. If you're going to sell, sell. And by the way, thank you to all of our patrons out there. So you guys, you know, you, you know you are. Thank we you want, again, guys. We, we appreciate it. It lets us do things like this. You know, a lot of the podcasts, when they're on the audio version, right, uh -huh. the first 20 minutes are commercials, you'll note that we get right into it. Uh, so, you know, that's because we've got a lot of great patrons that help us do that. All right, Blazy. I think Blazy needs to go, you know what? <laughs> yes, yes, he good seems, timing. He seems to be in the mood. To, He's yeah. going back and forth between the two of us trying to tell us something. something so, yeah. so we, we don't want to have any... We don't want to stink up our studio. No, it's a really bad idea. So thank you, guys. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Take care. Take care. Ciao.